Hello everybody, welcome to Toast Time, and this week it is sandwich bread. And if you haven't already guessed, yes, I'm making two different types. <laughs> so I'm going to do a standard one that is just kind of called American sandwich bread. Uh, the other one I'm going to do has some of the sourdough discard in it. So since I have to feed the starter all the time, I always have discard. And I'm going to be using some of that in this loaf. So it just gives it a nice little bit of a tangy flavor, um, but it also helps you use up that discard. Okay, so to start, uh, I'm going to do just the liquids into here. I already have the flour in. I'm going to just put the water and the discard into here, mix it up until it's a shaggy dough, and then it has to autolyze, which is basically the flour taking in the moisture of the liquids. Um, it's going to be seem at first like it's a really dry dough, but then when it sits for half an hour, it absorbs all that moisture and it works um, really well to, to hydrate it. And then you mix in the other ingredients. So I'm just going to start with that. That was my butter. Okay. There we go. All right. So I'm just going to put the water in and the discard. So this one got really liquidy. Uh, I left it sitting out for too long. So um, it's very, very liquidy, but that's okay. All right, then I'm gonna take this with the dough hook and put it onto the mixer for just a, a couple of minutes so that it gets all of the, um, the liquid mixed in with the dry. Here's my dough hook. <laughs> Now, while that's going for a minute, I just wanted to talk about different loaf pans. So I'm going to be doing two different types. So this is kind of the standard loaf uh, pan. This one's glass. You also have metal ones. And normally, if you've watched other things I've done, then you'll know that I use the Pullman loaf pan quite a bit, but I don't put the lid on it. So this time I'm going to use it correctly, and I'm going to use the Pullman so it's a square. And then when you put the lid on it, the lid is made of the same material. So it basically makes it into a perfect square that cooks up against the top. So you have a crust all the way around and straight edges. So this is what you'd be using for kind of tea sandwiches and things like that. And the lid just slides right on during your second rise. And it rises up against here. And then this heats up and cooks all sides of it. So it's pretty, it's really cool. And I have, this is my smaller size. I have another one that's about this long. So I'm going to go check on the dough. Let's see, a couple of dry patches in here just because they didn't get pulled in from the sides. So I'm just going to squeeze it together. And this is what it looks like right now. So it does look very dry. It doesn't look like a dough you would normally um, consider to be okay, but we're going to let it sit and you'll see the difference once that liquid takes over and hydrates the flour. So I'm gonna set it aside and we'll start with the other one. Okay, so this one um, I am going to salt. Right, so the flour, which I already have in here. Okay, and then the salt I'm gonna put in. Then everything else is going to go into this big four cup mix, um, measuring cup. So let me just make sure it's everything. Milk, which has been heated on the stove already. So this is warm, not hot because we're gonna be adding yeast but warm. So there's the milk. And then I have my water. Butter, which I melted already here. Do a little swirl because it did start solidifying a little bit. Okay, butter. And warm milk will probably help that too to remelt. Okay honey and the yeast. Yeah, so that's everything else. Okay. 
So when I put the honey in here, I sprayed it with some nonstick spray and then poured the honey in, but it has been sitting for a bit. So we'll see how well it, oh, no, it's coming out of there pretty well. That's great. All right, let me just get a spoon. It'll help the rest of this out, but it didn't really stick to the sides. Otherwise, you're going to have issue probably getting your full amount out of here because it honey is sticky. All right, and then I'm going to get yeast, sprinkle it in here. Nope, before I mix it in. Yeah, it's warm but not hot. And just mix this all together. Now we're going to take this over and put it with the dough hook. And as it's going, once the salt gets mixed into the flour, we're going to start pouring this in slowly. It's just going to help it really mix in there and not slosh around um, because that's, that's dangerous too. It can create quite a mess. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Put this on to the mixer. Dough hook goes on. Make sure the bowl is locked in. And just putting it on level one right now. And I have all of the liquid stuff here. And I'm going to just slowly pour it in. So another thing, this one has the honey. And the other recipe, it uses sugar. So sugar, when it's used in a recipe, is considered a liquid because when you melt sugar, it turns into a liquid. So honey um, is already a liquid, unless it's really cold, I guess. But um, you can kind of interchange them if you would prefer to have honey versus the sugar. Uh, but I'm doing them how the recipes are, and I, I really like the honey flavor when it comes through. Uh, it's not too much of it, but it just gives it a little bit extra and more layering on the flavors. To let it go for maybe about 10 minutes or so, um, and then we'll come back, and this one will probably, this one, whoop, there we go, will probably be ready to add in the other stuff. So uh, let's just take a quick look. Yep. I will show you when it's done. Nice and soft, but it's not sticky, which is perfect. It's exactly what we want. Um, now I'm going to prep my glass bowl for it to rise in. Make this into kind of a ball here. Okay. So grab my bowl. And my oil. I'm just going to do a little bit on the bottom. Oops. You can see kind of-ish what I did with the oil. Um, but then I'm going to take this and put it with the smooth side down. Give a little spin. Flip it over. And kind of mush it around a little bit so that everything's coated in oil. Just a little bit though. You don't want it to be incorporated into it, but you just don't want it to stick to the bowl. Uh, because then once it rises, you don't want to get rid of all of the air by trying to get it out of the bowl. So I'm going to do that, and I will put one of those shower caps on it so that it can do its rise. And then we will wait for the other, the sourdough one, to be ready, and we'll continue on. Okay, so I've brought over the sourdough uh, loaf dough that has been sitting and doing its hydration. So I want to show you now what it looks like. Um, I give it a couple of squeezes before I uh, turned on the camera. I just kind of went like this a little bit just to bring it together. Um, but it looks great. So now it actually looks like a dough instead of uh, that dry kind of pocket mess that we had before. So now we can put in the other ingredients. A little bit sticky. There we go. Okay. So this one, like I said before, has the sugar so instead of the honey. So put in the sugar. And that is what is going to help feed the yeast. And I'm going to put the salt over to the side um, so that it doesn't directly touch the yeast just because we don't want it to start damaging or killing. Salt kills the yeast, so we don't want it to do that before we start mixing. 
it'll be fine um, once it's mixed together. But if they touch directly, sometimes it can have some adverse effects. And this is butter, so this is softened. Um, it's gonna pop it in. All right, and then back over to the mixer. These two recipes really are just mixing and then waiting and then waiting again. So, <laughs> um, they don't take that much time of work actually happening, but they do take time because they have to rise twice and you shape them, um, things like that. All right. All right, so that butter is uh, very soft, so it's getting smushed around the bowl. I might have to scrape it down a couple of times, but um, it's gonna go for maybe seven minutes. I'm gonna say seven minutes. Um, but then I'll bring it back over so we can take a look. Okay, so this is looking beautiful. This is the sourdough one. I'll show you. Ta -da! So the butter really makes a big difference in this. Um, I mean, it's just really stretchy and elastic now. So when you put in the butter, you may want to do it a little differently. Um, I had to be patient with it and keep on scraping it down because the butter coated the outside of the bowl or the inside of the bowl um, and it just kept on rolling around with the dough. So you can do it little by little if you want. I just wanted to throw it in there, but um, you can do either way. And with this, I'm actually going to let it rise in here because I do want glass because it doesn't conduct the heat and make it rise unevenly. But I just realized after all of these years that that bowl and this both fit in the proving oven. So I'm going to do that, make this shape again. Uh, I put a tiny bit of oil in the bottom, less than I even did in that one. And swirl it around, and then swirl it here. Also, if you're just getting started with baking or you really like to be totally exact, uh, this is nice because you can kind of press it down and see where it is and then you can mark where it would be doubled um, because this needs to double. So you can use this uh, since it has the measuring on the side. Um, yeah, so going to put this on top, let it rise, and then we'll do shaping once they're both risen. So now we're on to shaping. This is the original kind of sandwich bread recipe. Nope. <laughs> This is the original sandwich bread recipe, and this is the sourdough. So take a look at how they rose. Beautiful. So, and you can see when it was down here before, we wanted to double. So this does help you to kind of see how it grows. Um, so we'll do our shaping. Okay, so this was the sourdough, and I wanted the sourdough in the Pullman. So this one I'm going to do first. Sure. Okay. All right. So I'm going to take this out. Nice and airy. Let's see, let's see. Nice and airy. All right. So I'm going to set it down. I'm going to extend it to about the length of the pan I'm using. And I'm going to roll it up. This is going to take out a lot of the air, and that's fine because it's going to rise again. It's going to do its proving, and it will um, get that air back in there. But I'm going to tuck it in and try and make it as pretty as possible. So obviously I tucked in the sides here, so it doesn't look <laughs> very pretty. But then I'm going to take it, I'm going to roll this around it so that it covers it up and it creates a seam. Now we're going to put it so the seam is down and then that will rise and you won't have that same line there. But here we go. And I'm going to take it and put it in here. And just kind of spread it out so it's even. Because otherwise if you start with it uneven you're going to get um, whatever part is higher it's going to rise higher and you're going to get a weird kind of positioning and and rise on it. So I'm going to kind of smush it down so it's even. And that's that.
There's one. Put this on here so I can keep track. I knew I did the one with the design for the original. So, and then we have the sourdough. <laughs> so cool. All right, here I'll show you the amount of air that got into this. You can see all the air bubbles that form. I'm going to do pretty much the same thing. I'm going to take this, find out about how long it needs to be. This is probably more dough than I actually need for this pan because I am going to do it with the, uh, the lid, the Pullman style. But I'm going to take the air out of this one. And I'm going to fold it in here. And then roll it up. All right, and I will place it in. That's it. Do that. I'm going to leave the lid off for right now while it's doing the beginning of its proving, and then I'll put it on when I see that it's almost at the top. So here it is. All right, so we have about another forty minutes or so of rising. And we can move on to the next thing of baking. These came out of the oven just a few minutes ago. They're still really warm, but I wanted to show what the Pullman loaf looks like when it is opened up. Uh, so right now I'm going to move this. <laughs> and then, so the Pullman, again, has the same material on the lid as it is around the pan. So you're going to get a square loaf because it, uh, right when it was almost at the top, when it was proving, I put the lid on and then it finishes its rise and then it rises more in the oven. So it's going to be up against the top. And it's still warm. So I'm trying to be careful. Yeah, there it is. So this is the sourdough one. Yeah. All right. And with Pullman loaf pans, or the ones that I have anyway, you don't grease them. You don't have to put anything into it, um, but you do want to take it out pretty quickly after it finishes baking because there is moisture and you can see here, I left it in a couple minutes while I was finishing setting up the, um, the camera and everything, but there are some areas where it is kind of soft, but that's it's okay. It's going to dry and it'll be fine. Still very hot, but I'm going to cut into it even though technically I'm not supposed to yet, but we'll start with this one here. So this is the normal sandwich loaf. And yeah, it's nice. You can see the crumb it has really nice texture to it. Um, it's going to hold well onto mayo, mustard, anything that you're putting onto a sandwich. Um, this is one of our, our favorite kind of basic loaves. And it toasts up really nice on the top in the oven. This was just sprayed with water. So as opposed to some of the other loaves where you have to use milk or egg wash or something like that to get this nice browning, this actually just cooks that way. So it's really nice. All right. And I'll show you this one. I'm going to cut in a little bit more so you can really see the shape of it. Yeah. Nice. This is the one with a little bit of sourdough starter in it, and it looks really pretty. You can see all the, um, the texture, but it's still a closed crumb, so you can use it for those kinds of sandwiches and things. But see, it's that square. So 
this. See how this batch turned out. Oh, it's still really hot. <laughs> okay. All right, let's start with this one. Has a nice sketch. Has a great crust on it. Um, I always do a little bit more salt than the recipes say with bread because I like that salty flavor to come through. Um, so I can really taste that. Really, the crust is just so crispy and crunchy, and it's nice basic flavor that you're going to be able to use for a lot of things. You could do. Um... <laughs> you guys want more? <laughs> I have three little ones, three, <laughs> I didn't mean to call you a little one, my husband and the two little ones, I was going to say three little beggars over here, that's what I was going to say, <laughs> all right, let me try the sourdough now, all right, you guys want to try, you guys want to try this one? There you go. All right. Cheers. Has a bit more of a chew to it. Um, not as crispy. It's really nice um, flavor-wise. Not a fan? This one? This one, once it cools down completely and it forms that crust back on the outside, it's going to be um, better. That's one of the reasons you don't cut things when they're still warm. Um, but we have something we have to do tonight, so I wanted to make sure that I got to show the bread. Um, but, yeah, they're both really good loaves of bread. Um, this one is going to get crispier once it cools. But, yeah, sourdough, if you're um, keeping a starter, um, mama, then this is a great way to be able to use it. Um, but this one is just a really nice loaf of bread, and they're both really simple ingredients and pretty easy to do. It just takes a lot of time while you're waiting for them to rise. So thank you for joining me this week, and I'll see you next toast time.